I don't know about you, but after a vacation or a holiday break, I always have a hard time getting back into work and ramping up into being and feeling productive. It's not really surprising to me that after Christmas and New Year's and all the holidays in December, people really struggle with sticking to New Year's resolutions. So I thought today that I'd share some of the tips that have been most helpful for me to getting stuff done. Number one, do your most important task first thing in the day. When I have important work that I need to do, it can feel really high pressure. And so what I end up doing is procrastinating. I'll do things that, yeah, they need to get done, like replying to emails or posting to social media. But if I only do that and I don't sit down to create new work or work on the big important projects that are really gonna make a big difference in my career, well then I'm not making meaningful progress towards my creative goals. Productivity isn't about trying to cram more things into your life. It's about getting the most important things done, the most meaningful work. I procrastinate the important stuff for a lot of reasons. I might feel intimidated by it. I might feel afraid of failure. And I tell myself, oh, well, these other unintimidating things, they need to get done too. They're important too. But when I force myself to do the most important thing first in the day, then it means that I'm taking at least one step forward every single day. And because it's the first thing that I do, I can't procrastinate it. Now, maybe your art career isn't your full-time gig. Maybe you have a day job or you're a stay-at-home parent. Whatever your first free time is, that's when you want to prioritize doing that most important task first. And then you can do all of the other little things that are also important, like replying to emails or whatever else ends up occupying most of your time. Number two, write out a clear list of what you need to do the night before. Now, as basic as this seems, writing down my to-do list has probably been the number one thing that's helped me not get sidetracked and actually get stuff done. I procrastinate a lot when I'm not sure what I need to be doing, and I'm more tempted to take a break because my brain is overwhelmed trying to remember all the little tasks that I'm supposed to do. So let's say that my goal is to create a portfolio website but what will happen is I'll feel overwhelmed by that task. What even am I supposed to do first? Having a written step-by-step -step list of what I need to do solves that feeling of overwhelm. So I'll write down, pick out 10 pieces of artwork that I want to put on my portfolio website. That is so much more manageable. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. I won't get sidetracked by all the other parts of the website I'm supposed to work on. And then the next thing on the list would be, pick out a headshot, and then write a bio. These items are concrete, they're clear. It doesn't leave me any questions of what I'm supposed to be doing. And writing it out the night before means I know exactly what I need to do first thing when I get started the next day. No wasted time. Number three, use peer pressure to your advantage. So some of us are really good at setting deadlines for ourselves and sticking to them. And a lot of people that just doesn't work for. If you find that you can't stick to deadlines just because you've set them for yourself, you're not alone. A lot of people need that extra motivation of someone else expecting something of you. So joining an exercise class is a great example of this in action because you have the motivation of other people expecting you to show up. You've essentially paid someone to hold you accountable to going to the gym and actually doing the work you're probably not gonna sit in the back of the yoga class and not do the stretches. Whereas if you went to the gym by yourself, you might just leave after being there for five minutes or not really feel committed to actually doing the work. As far as an art context goes, you can get yourself an accountability buddy where you share with each other your creative goals and check in with each other once a week. Or you can pair up with someone else on a project knowing that the other person can't finish their half of the project until you finish yours. And that can be really motivating for you. You don't need to develop more willpower. You need to find ways to get others to put expectations on you so that you can create that motivation to do the thing. Another great way to do this is to make a bet with a friend. Tell them, hey, if I don't finish a drawing every week, I owe you 50 bucks. And that'll motivate them to check up on you and make sure that you're holding up your end of the deal. And that will also help you feel the pressure of like, okay, I'm gonna stick to this thing. I'm actually gonna make a drawing every week. Number four, getting in a good mental headspace. When I tell myself that I'm lazy or I'm not good enough or I'm not productive enough or I'm not talented enough, it's really difficult for me to make progress on my creative goals because I feel really discouraged to work on them. And when I think positively about myself and my work, 
ideas come more easily to me, and I work faster. That negative mindset of, I can't do this, I'm not good enough, I'm not talented enough, that kind of negative self-talk, it destroys my productivity, possibly more than anything else that I do. Now, the best exercise I've found to help counter this negative self-talk is to ask myself two questions. Is this thought true? And what's a more helpful thought? So if I'm thinking, I'm a terrible artist, well, is that true? No, I've made some art that I am proud of in the past. Is that a helpful thought? No. So what is a helpful thought? Well, a helpful thought is I am growing and expanding as an artist and I am learning new skills and getting better at this. Every single painting that I make is a little bit of progress. And that thought, that is much more helpful. It's much more encouraging and it helps me feel good about sitting down to do the work. Number five. Design an environment that makes it easier for you to be productive. We naturally gravitate towards the easiest option. If you have to clean out old dirty paint brushes and clear out a space before you can actually sit down and work on a drawing, that's gonna create some resistance for you. So make it easier for yourself by having an area that's ready to go to do your work. If you wanna paint more, then have a dedicated space with the materials ready to go. And so that means that when you finish your last painting, painting session, always wash out your paint brushes so that it's easy for you to start next time. If you use a lot of white paint, always have a backup tube so that if you run out, you don't have the excuse of, oh, well, I can't paint because I don't have enough white paint. You'll always have a backup. If you need to do photo shoots, have your lights always set up and your backdrops laid out. Number six. Finding motivation. It's hard to sit down and get to work when you don't feel inspired or motivated. The tricky thing about motivation though, sometimes it doesn't show up until you do. Even if you don't feel motivated when you sit down and start doing the work, sometimes the motivation shows up. And motivation is just a feeling. Just because you don't feel like sitting down to make art doesn't mean you can't sit down to make art. But honestly, that's nice in theory. Just do it, don't worry about how you feel. But I mean, in reality, that's just not how we operate. We're human emotional creatures, or at least I'm a very emotional creature. And it's way easier to do things when we can get in touch with motivation. And there are ways to drum up motivation when you don't have it naturally. For example, a really fun way of motivating yourself is to imagine doing the thing that you need to do. Imagine having a really successful drawing session. Visualize really enjoying the process of working on your portfolio website. Imagine it going really, really well and how awesome you'll feel when the project is finished and how well it'll be received by other people, how much they're gonna love the art that you made. Imagine those feelings. Imagine how you will feel, how proud you will feel, the joy, the passion of the craft that you're making. Actually imagining yourself feeling those feelings can help trigger that motivation and inspiration. And even if this doesn't always work, there's lots of more ways that we can motivate ourselves, like tracking your progress or harnessing the power of doing things differently or in a novel way and, and lots more. And I have a whole lesson dedicated to motivation techniques in my Productivity for Artists class. And you can find a link for that in the description below. I also want to say it's not fair to expect the same levels of productivity from yourself at all times in your life. There are times in your life when you can be insanely productive and times when being productive is not the priority. Having a baby, moving, being sick, caring for a sick loved one, or losing a loved one, all of these are huge life events and they require more of our attention. Life is not about chasing productivity. There is so much more to life than just work. But for when you are trying to maximize your productivity, I hope that these tips can help you. If you'd like to learn more productivity tips from me, check out my latest class, Productivity for Artists. You can use the link in the description below to get a free trial to Skillshare, or if subscriptions aren't your thing, you can purchase the class directly from me. Both links are in the description below. I hope that you found at least one helpful tip today, and if you'd like to see me do more videos like this on YouTube, please hit the like button and tell me in the comments what topics you'd like me to discuss. Happy creating, art friends.